Breaking news. That breaking news right now is coming to us out of Ybor City. Right now, we're about to hear from a St. Pete fire lieutenant and his attorney over a lawsuit they're filing against the city of St. Pete. He said the city is denying him benefits he should receive under a law Governor DeSantis signed back in May. Lieutenant Jason Francis has been with St. Pete Fire for more than 16 years and he was diagnosed with cancer. The issue at hand is the date he was officially diagnosed and the date the law went into effect. Let's listen in. There's no magic in this statute that says that, you know, you have to be diagnosed after July 1, 2019. And our position is that as long as you're a firefighter and Lieutenant Francis continues to be a firefighter, even though he's on a medical leave, as long as you're a firefighter and you've been diagnosed with one of the covered cancers, you are entitled to these benefits. And Lieutenant Francis will tell you how important these benefits are to him and to others who would be in the same position that he's in, in terms of getting the treatment that they need and protecting the, um, the financial interests of their, their families. So. Uh, I'd like to open it up for any questions that any of you might have of me, of uh, any of the union officials here, or primarily uh, questions that you might have for uh, Jason. Lieutenant Francis, could you walk us through a little bit of your story and your words? Sure. Um, uh, in my annual physical, uh, a nodule was found on my thyroid, and it looks suspicious. So they sent me off for further uh, investigation through my doctor and through specialists. Um, Long story short, uh, they did a needle biopsy on, on a lymph node and found that it was uh, it contained blood and other fluids with thyroid cancer cells. Um, I very shortly thereafter had a complete thyroidectomy, which is the removal of the thyroid, and they also removed uh, 53 lymph nodes in my neck and uh, collarbone area. Um, ever since then, um, because I don't have a thyroid anymore, I take a thyroid medication every day. Um, and I've been told that it can be a very long marathon to get that dosage correct, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm having some trouble getting my, my, tabo my uh, metabolism correct. Um, when you and, found out um, that they had rejected um, your application, what was your reaction? Uh, I couldn't believe it. Um, I mean, part of me could, but it was really a shock, honestly. Um, uh, like Bob said, we've been fighting for over a decade to get this passed, and it finally got passed. And, you know, you think you're going to have an uh, easier time of it, and it, it doesn't happen. So there was a lot of emotion. There was anger and shock. And, and, and I thought about a, and a, a lot of the other people that will be diagnosed in the future or have been recently, and they're going to have to fight through this as well. Um, as, as Bob stated, it's, uh, it seems like I'm the first one, so hopefully um, this can make a path of less resistance in the future for the, for the next folks. If you could clarify one thing for us, I know that you've been saying that you were diagnosed January 2019. The city, in their statement, says that you were diagnosed in May 2018. Can you just clarify for us what that discrepancy is? Yeah, I have no idea where they got that from. Um, I, have a, I have medical documents from the hospital that states I was diagnosed on January 9th of this year. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know what the May of 2018 is. And there's no magic to that date in any event because the city's taking the position that if you're diagnosed any time prior to the effective date of the statute, you get no benefits under the statute. So whether it was January of 2019 or May of 2018, as far as the city is concerned, that's irrelevant. So this is your first diagnosis of cancer? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, to, to follow up on that, I, I don't know what that date is, honestly. I don't, I'd have to talk to them and find out what they are referring to. When you use the word benefits, can you clarify what your client would get if he did indeed qualify for um, the benefits in this case? Yeah, we have a copy of the, the statute there for, for you to review, but the, the principal benefit is assistance with all of the out-of-pocket expenses that a cancer patient undergoing treatment would, would endure, uh, co-pays, deductibles, things of that nature. Uh, there's a provision in there for a one-time payment of $25,000, and I understand from, from talking to the, um, to the uh, representatives of the state um, firefighters um, union that that was put in place to help <coughs> folks like, like Jason with out-of-pocket expenses. If you have to go somewhere for treatment and you've got a plane ticket that you have to buy, you have to be in a hotel somewhere away from home. So those are the kinds of benefits that were put into this statute, they were put in there for, for a reason, 
There's also a presumption, and this is important as well, that if you're diagnosed with one of these forms of cancer, it is established without having to go through any additional proof that these cancers are job related. And I'd invite any of these guys who are out there on the front lines every day to tell you the kinds of carcinogens that they're exposed to every day. And they're always playing catch up in terms of trying to protect the firefighters from these carcinogens. So you may have a suit that works today, but you know, maybe there's a better suit that would protect you from, from these different carcinogens. So um, this is a tough job and it's not just the, you know, the exposure that you have to being injured while you're on the job, it's the exposure that, you're, that you have day to day in doing this job. And these guys have no idea going forward how it's going to affect them individually. It's, it's so important for these guys to have this kind of protection and for, for us as citizens and taxpayers to ensure that they have this kind of protection. Because they literally risk their lives every day, day in and day out. And, and for the city to, to turn its back on, on Jason, Jason's been there for a long time. He's done a great job for the city. He's exposed himself to, to these kinds of risks for the citizens of St. Petersburg and for for the administration over there to say, oh, we're sorry, Jason, because your diagnosis occurred before July 1st, um, it's our position that you're not entitled to anything. That's just, that's just wrong. So, and, sir, that being the case, do you think it really just boils down to the language, or do you think there's something more here? I, I don't know. I, you know, at the risk of being cynical, everything that has a price tag uh, gets the attention of, of public officials. Do we, do we want to spend this money? How's it going to affect our tax base? How much is it going to cost us? If we start letting people have these benefits that we have to pay for who are diagnosed before July 1, you know, are we opening a Pandora's box? So I, I think there's, there's a lot of that going on as well. Do you foresee this being an issue in other cities across the state oh, yeah. as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I went to a, uh, a meeting of um, um, attorneys who represent uh, firefighters locals throughout the state and I know in Orlando for example there are four cases that are now in the pipeline they've you know four guys who have been diagnosed and they're looking for benefits and the city has not yet determined what benefits if any they're going to give to these folks so there are more coming and there will continue to be cases because as I said it's it's a it's a dangerous job and um, you know, the, the exposure to these carcinogens isn't going away anytime soon. Now, Lieutenant, you're on medical leave right now. How mm -hmm. long have you been a firefighter, um, and why is this, this job so important to you? Uh, I was hired in 2002, October, um, so just about 17 years coming up on 18 to start. Um, it's I've always wanted to do it, and I know it sounds kind of cliche, but when I was 18 or 19, that's all I've ever wanted to do. And uh, pretty much my entire life since then has either been trying to get into the job or working at the job. Do you plan to go back still? I do, yeah. Because if I, like I told these guys, when I go back, it means I feel great. And I feel nowhere near that right now. Um, so, yes. Do you ever think twice uh, when you go on a call about putting your life on the line for the people you're serving? I don't. Um, but it definitely gives me pause after this ordeal. Um, but I, I would still do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's in your, again, it's cliche, but it's in your blood. If you want to do it, you really want to do it, and you're not going to stop. When you were told that the benefits were denied, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Uh, how much trouble it's going to be. You know, once, once they showed their cards, um, I, I, you know, I wasn't really looking forward to this process and having to fight again. Um, that's my biggest concern. You know, my wife's going through this, watching me struggle every day, and she's been there like a rock, and she she has a hard time too, of course, dealing with it. So it's kind of emotional. So I apologize, but um, it, it, it I'm just not looking forward to to the battle. I just I thought. You know, they would treat me like a like a human asset, not 
uh, a liability that's going to cost them money. And Mr. McKee, you're saying there's there's no wording in the statute that says you know somebody who was diagnosed prior to July one is ineligible for benefits. That's correct. There's no wording in the statute that says there is no retroactive uh, application um, of the statute to people who were you know eligible firefighters who were diagnosed prior to July one. So it's silent. Are, are you are you seeking um, the like? And when you talk about retroactive, are you seeking um, monies lost um, prior to July first, or are you looking at July first, even though he's diagnosed in January, the, the the benefits that he's incurred as soon as the law went into effect? We're looking for all of the benefits that Jason is entitled to, all of his out of pocket expenses since he was diagnosed and the out-of-pocket expenses that he will continue to uh, have to shoulder going forward as he continues his treatment. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the payment of the $25,000 one-time one lump sum so that uh, Jason doesn't have to go out of pocket for incidental expenses. As I said, uh, he, he may have to travel for, for treatment and uh, things of that nature. So, yeah, we're looking for, for all of it. And as of right now, the, the city hasn't conceded with respect to any of it, either retroactive or prospective. As far as the city is concerned, he's out of luck. He's out of luck. And it's so arbitrary because if you think about it this way, the city's position is, look, if you're, if you're diagnosed um, at, at 6 p.m. On, on June 30th of 2019, you get nothing. But if you're diagnosed at 6 a.m. on July 1st, you get everything that, that's entailed in the, in the, in the statute. And that's just crazy. That's crazy. Well, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I was looking at comparatively like the PTSD bill, and there seems to be some very um, distinct language in that as far as like the benefits, that, and that doesn't seem to be the case in this. No. No, and, and, you know, our position is, look, if the legislature wanted to make it plain that you have to be diagnosed prior to July 1 of 2019 in order to get any of the benefits, it could have said so. In the statute, it didn't. And, and to add to that, uh, you know, in non-legal terms, I guess my own words, it, it's certainly not the spirit of the bill to have it that way. There's a lot of people before me and there will be a lot of people after me, whether it was January of 2019 or July 1st or even last year. I mean, there's We've had a couple guys recently die from cancer, and it's too late for them, obviously, but um, it certainly is not what the legislators in uh, Tallahassee wanted. When the governor signed this... Okay, so right now you are listening to St. Pete Fire Lieutenant Jason Francis and his attorney um, speak about how he applied to get benefits from a, a new law that was just signed by Governor Ron DeSantis that went into effect. July of 2019 to give um, firefighters who have cancer certain benefits. Jason says he was denied because of the date of his diagnosis, which was January 2019. That was before the law went into effect of, in July of 2019. Now, I do want to point out, we did hear from the city, an administration official with the city did tell us that the law is vague and they will go to court to clarify it. We do have a reporter who was at that press conference. We'll bring you more on this story. We'll continue to follow the story on ABC Action News streaming now. And if you want to watch the rest of that press conference, listen to Jason speak. He was pretty emotional about what's going on. You can just watch it on our ABC Action News Facebook page.